Hey, welcome back. We've been talking through ideas in a physics course and we're in the middle of a momentum unit. And today we're going to be talking about a concept called impulse and how to solve problems using impulse with some simple, straightforward strategies. So let's take a look. First, I want to ask if you've ever been in a car wreck. I know I have. There are a whole lot of not fun. And let's take a look at this image here. And I want you to explain as best you can what happens when these two cars crash into each other in terms of momentum and physics concepts. So let's focus on the yellow car for now. So can you explain using some physics concepts we've gone over what is going on here? Okay, and if the answer is no, that's okay. Let me ask some more leading questions to make it easier. So is there a force involved? Is there a time through which that force is applied? And would there be a change in momentum for the yellow car? What do you think? The answer is yes for all three. Definitely there's a force. There's a push involved on the yellow car from the red car and vice versa, actually. And there's a time through which that force is applied. And there is going to be a change in momentum for the yellow car. If we assume it, say, started from rest, it would have some forward momentum as this red car is crashing into it as a result of the crash of the red car. And that's what we're talking about today. So we're talking about this concept called impulse. And here is our equation. So this impulse, this is force times time, this whole thing is impulse right here, is equal to a change in momentum. So that's a delta P. Anytime we have a delta, we mean final minus initial. So let's go ahead and write that out to make it a little more clear. And then you could say, well, what exactly do we mean by momentum again? Maybe you've forgotten the equation. So let's go ahead and take it one step further. So this is the typical equation that's used for impulse right here, where this whole thing is an impulse. So a force applied through a certain amount of time. And if you take an AP course, they're going to use J oftentimes as the variable for impulse, you could say. But for most physics classes, you're just going to be working with probably this equation right here. I do want to point out that the force in an impulse equation is a vector, so be careful with the direction involved. And lastly, the impulse from one object on the second is equal to the impulse from the second on the first in the opposite direction. So this is just like the momentum version of Newton's third law. For every force, there's an equal and opposite reaction force. Typically, we don't notice this because we just focus on one object at a time, usually. But I do want to remind you of that so that you have that going on in the back of your mind. All right, let's take a look at a quick problem here. So let's say you have a car with a certain amount of mass. It's traveling on a road with an initial velocity given. The driver spots a deer and quickly slows to a certain speed. Use the impulse momentum theorem and find the force during the negative acceleration and the displacement during the negative acceleration. So if this is our forward direction here, then our backwards direction is going to be this way. And one of the first things we're going to do, so this will kind of serve as our diagram here. And along with that, one of the first things we're going to do is take the word problem, so to speak, information and translate that into physics variables that we can use so that I can get rid of this and work with some more space on the page. So I'm going to go ahead and write what I know in terms of my givens here and what the problem is asking of us for the two parts. All right, fair enough. So then what we can do is start thinking about what we need to solve for. And this is an impulse lesson, so we might as well start with the impulse equation and see what we know and don't know. If we look at it this way, we do know our time, our mass, our V final, our mass, our V initial. We don't know our force, so we can go ahead and isolate for that. So I've done that here, and then we can go ahead. Now we're ready to plug in numbers at the very end once it's all isolated and to solve. And notice I'm gonna get a negative answer here. My question to you is, does that make sense? And hopefully you can say the answer is yes. What that would mean is if this is the positive direction right here, the force is going to be in the negative direction, in the backwards direction. And that is the case. You would have an acceleration in that direction and a force in that direction. And we're talking about like the force due to friction from the brakes and the friction from the tires on the road, that kind of thing. So all of that's going to combine to have a backwards force that slows the car down. And the next thing I'm going to do is just update my known information over here. So I've got my list going on of what I know, and then we'll continue with the problem. So our next thing we need to solve for is a delta x. So what I've done here is I've typed out the kinematics equations for us to take a look at. And my question to you is, which kinematics equation could you use to be able to solve for delta x? And the answer is the third and the fourth would be pretty easy to solve for. You can do those in one step. So I'm going to go ahead and pick one of these equations down here. 
This time I just picked the fourth equation to work with. So I wrote the equation down, I've already isolated, and I'm ready to plug in my numbers and solve for my unknown. Notice I've labeled this as a positive 53, and that's to give us the idea that we're moving in the forward direction. This should say 53.5, I put in one too many digits here. And I do want to summarize the strategy here is, after you do everything we have been doing throughout the year, you may also need to use kinematics to solve for a remaining unknown when you're working problems of impulse. I guess the one thing I would also stress is be careful about negatives when it comes to the direction of the force or direction of an acceleration. Be careful. If they are negative, you need to make them negative. Otherwise, you'll get the problem wrong. Oh, one other thing I want to mention. If we take a look at the equation in the context of our previous work, you could have an example where like a ball is thrown against a wall. This is another common example. So the ball, let's say it has a positive initial velocity and it has a negative final velocity after it bounces off the wall. You need to make sure that is a negative velocity if it is moving in the opposite direction, if it is moving in the negative direction. That is another case where students oftentimes make mistakes. So just be careful about your directions with your initial velocity and your final velocity here. In any case, that's it for impulse. Pretty straightforward as you start to do these problems. If you have any questions, let me know down below and I hope you have a great day. Take care.